I'm here at Sacred Heart University at the Women Can Have It All Lecture Series, and I'm here with two women who truly exemplify that, that phrase. The president and founder of YBF Beauty, and this year's Connecticut Female Entrepreneur of the Year, Stacey Shefflin, um, and the host of the series, Linda McMahon, former WWE CEO. I want to tell you it's an honor to be with you guys today, and uh, thanks so much for, for speaking with me. So, you guys, very successful businesswoman. Um, you've risen to the ranks of executives in your respective fields, WWE and YBF, but there's an issue being that in this country, the Fortune 500 companies, there's only 20, 23 active women CEOs. What advice can you guys give to young women to, who are entering the workforce so that they can aspire to be successful and garner that ranking of CEO? Well, I can honestly say that uh, I'm not sure that I would advise them to always seek to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. I think I would advise them to follow their dreams and where do they want to be and to be their self and to develop you know, their skills, their passions, because you really can't go forward and do anything unless you have a passion for what you're doing. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of lady luck along the way, but you've got to be willing to really work hard and I typically find that of all of the young women that I meet, they are really um, striving you know, to accomplish their goals. And uh, that was, that's what I would advise them to do. I would have to agree with Linda and I would add in, in there, be a little patient. Because we as women put so much pressure on ourselves, <laughs> especially the young women of today, to try and be a leader of, of a major company. If you just be yourself and do what you love and love what you do, the, the titles will come. Now, you, president and founder of your own company, YBF, um, where you didn't always, you weren't always an executive, you weren't always a businesswoman. You started as a model with the Ford Modeling Agency. How was making that shift, jumping from modeling to being a businesswoman, to being an executive? What, what did you take, did you take anything away from modeling? Yes, I did. That's a great question because, you know, as a model, there's so many times we hear no. Rejection's a big thing. I had to learn not to take things personal as a model for 20 years and as a businesswoman. I wanted to do so many things so fast and people were always trying to put the reins on me. Wait, wait, you know, think about it, process it, you know, and I had to learn patience. So as a model, I learned how to not take things personal. And as a business owner, I learned even more that to go with the punches. I, I wasn't pick packing, wrapping and strapping when I was a model, but now as a business owner, you do it all. So you have to learn tenacity and persistence and be, have a positive energy about all of it. Now, Linda, when you were CEO of WWE, you were noted as doing so many things outside of what your CEO role needed. You uh, even wrote for WWE publications along with your business efforts. You rebranded the company from WWF to WWE. What um, motivated you to do so much more than was needed? Um, was that just something in your personality? Well, honestly, when you assume the title of CEO, it's exactly what Stacy was just saying. There really aren't any restraints on what you do. You have to roll up your sleeves. The beauty uh, at WWE was learning so many different kinds of businesses, learning the publishing business, learning the music business, learning the licensing business of putting your name and trademarks on products that are going to be sold around the world. So to have the opportunity to learn how to do all of those other businesses was part of not only my personal growth, but part of the growth of WWE. Now, Stacy, when you founded your company, it's uh, YBF, which stands for Your Best Friend Beauty. Um, what, You're so good. <laughs> thank you. know, I try. I'm trying. You're really good. Thanks. <laughs> but um, what what went into picking that name? What was the? Is there a story behind that? Absolutely. It wasn't my choosing. It was the choosing of our girlfriends, um, our consumers, which we call girlfriends. We went on a cruise, a thousand women out at sea, and we had had a brand for 12 years called Models Prefer. What do models prefer? And it was a beauty brand as well. And we went out to sea and we decided we wanted a new brand with a new name. The girlfriends, our consumers, our voyagers, they decided it should be products you would tell your best friend about. Nothing comes better than it comes from with what you've built as a community. We engaged as women, they decided the name, they depicted what it would look like, how it would feel, how women would engage with it. That's not anything that one of us as, as company owners could have even envisioned happening. So I'm very blessed that it wasn't me, it was a community of women that came together and had like mind and light heart and said, this is what we wanna build. And they've built it from day one. So I'm very honored that I'm living their legacy a little bit, which is great. 
right. That's awesome. Let me, I, if I may, let me just add on a little bit to that. One of the things that Stacy does so well, which is what you have to do uh, when you're an entrepreneur and you're developing a product, you first of all have to have a passion for your product. You have to know your product very well, and you have to understand and know your consumer. And she has all three of those qualities and except we're trying to work on her passion <laughs> yeah <laughs> great i had a good mentor <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fantastic now um this is your second installment in the women can have it all lecture series um uh, what makes you so passionate about your message and what do you hope that the audience can take away from the different guests and the different topics that you bring up one of the things i Karen, that you mentioned at the very beginning was the uh, paucity, you didn't use that word, but the paucity really of women who are CEOs in terms of the top uh, Fortune 500 companies, you know, only 23 and only 16 percent of corporate boards have women. Even those studies have shown, uh, many studies have shown that women CEOs and women on the boards of those companies, those companies have better and stronger bottom lines. I just think that women need to have more encouragement. I mean, the phrase, women can have it all, really is one to be provocative. Can you have it all? Or what does that mean for each individual woman? It's really setting her own goals so that she can accomplish her own goals. And so what Stacy and I want to do, Stacy does it in her business and she does it throughout the world when she's traveling, is really to inspire young women to follow your dreams, to get out there, to work hard, to do it. Start your own company if you want to. Or if you're in a company, just do your best every day, you know, for your own value and self-esteem. It's not about getting to a place because somebody else wants you to be there. It's what do you want to do and having the courage and the conviction to do that. I have one last question for you guys. Um, you're both executives. It's, that's your, that's your, your job title. But you also have another job. You guys are both mothers and very good mothers from what I understand. Um, what do you take away from motherhood? What do you take away from parenthood that you can bring to business and vice versa? Having an ear, being a good listener. That's what it's all about when you're a mom. Your, di your day is trials and tribulations, but when you come home and you put your mom hat on, it's all about listening with your heart. I get teared up because our oldest just went off to college uh -huh. well, and she's out of the weekend. I was there last you weekend, so I shouldn't be crying. <laughs> but just for all the young girls that watch this, your mothers love you unconditionally. You have, may have moments, but as, as parents, we guide and we give love unconditionally, but we support you in everything that you do and never second guess that. So I think as a mother and as a business owner, be proud of the people that you surround yourself with and your family. Be proud of them and embrace them every day and let them know that they can be the very best they can possibly be. And you'll never second guess maybe a decision they made. It was a choice they made and they had to learn from it. And same in our businesses. We learn every day in our businesses. We never stop learning. I think that's why we love being business owners. That's so beautifully said, and I would just like to add, I have yet one other step beyond because I am now a grandmother. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I'd only have had this wonderful experience with my children, and I'm very uh, delighted. In fact, Stephanie, um, my daughter, was the first uh, guest that I interviewed in this series, and she is a young mom who has three daughters, the oldest of whom is eight. So she's balancing career and work and all of the things that she's trying to do. And as I watch her even a bit more, you know, today, I realize all the things that I went through, and sometimes you're not even paying attention, you know, when you're doing it. But you are bringing that level of balancing tasks and doing so many things all at one time as a mom. Listen, there is no harder or more rewarding job, I think, in the world than being a mom. Uh, but, boy, it is challenging. It really requires great organizational skills. It requires great diplomacy, especially when you throw dad in the mix. <laughs> um, and so I think you bring all of that to the table um, in, into the business world. Well, thank you guys so much for speaking with me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, for everyone here at Sacred Heart, I'm Kieran McGurl. Have a great day. <laughs>